offended. And, and that offense runs deep because of previous offenses. Um, you're worried. You're not relying on me. Um, you have this weight of control, right? That you're now, you're, you're sort of, your life is out of balance and you're trying to gain control. No, give it up. Time to grow. Podcast, take one. Jay, why don't you kick, kick us off? Um, Hi guys, this is Amo. He's my partner in crime and my confidant. Coefficient of drag. Do you want to talk about the title of today's podcast? Sure. Um, I think this is, there's a small backstory to this, right? Hey guys, this is Josh and I'm his Robin, his Batman. Going into the year, I, I started with this whole idea of thinking about, you know, what, what are things that I don't want to carry into the next year and what are things that would help me to offload so that I could reload. And therefore, it's all about baggage, right? End of the day. You know, I just realized the fact that the more you carry the slower you go, right? And I learned from a friend recently about the fact that the longer the hike, the smaller the bag. Mm, that's interesting. Right, because... Relevant for Switzerland too. Yeah, it's relevant for for, for any, any place and for anybody who hikes, right? True. Because you have to really downsize your bag if you really want to go far. Mm. And so that got me thinking about what are some things that I should offload. And I thought about these three things. Uh, I think we should discuss that today on the idea of what are baggages, weights that we are carrying, which slows us down. Mm. I, I think Go it's ahead. interesting that you talk about offloading. Because usually when I think of the new year, I think of what can I add to this year? Mm. Right, like so, I think of skills or I don't know mm. uh, financial goals. I think of goals, right? Like uh, I want to be healthier. I don't really think of offloading, right? Like so, maybe maybe talk a little bit about that more. Like let's say, for example, I, I would say I want to cut out sugar, and that's me looking towards health. But maybe the offloading would be I want to stop having cr sugar cravings. I don't know. Like d dive a little bit deeper into what you mean by offloading baggage. Sure. Yeah. I'm usually packing up a lot of gear for productions and stuff, right? And then um, I'm always, you know, finding ways to keep things the most efficient. So I was just thinking about uh, this, you know, small little bag that I started with. Um, it's the tiniest of the bags. And then I realized all that I want to fit in uh, cannot fit into this. So I have to be precise about what fits in. And it got me really thinking about the fact that if I really want this year to count, if I really want this year to uh, help me achieve all that I I think God has put on my heart, um, I really need to be intentional about what fits into this mm. small bag. Because many times we think the bag is unlimited, but the bag is so limited. And the bag is limited to the point that it's only so many hours and so many things and so many things that you can fit in a day. Uh, but we we begin to live life like this. There's unlimited time, there's unlimited resources, there's unlimited days, there's unlimited space for us to pack so many things into our daily life, right? So probably that's what this whole thing uh, Start my thinking on the idea that you know we should unload before we reload. The object that you push against, right? So, for example, if you were talking about uh, driving a car through a windstorm, right? Obviously, you you have to exert more pressure to push through, isn't mm -hmm. it? So, the only way to get across easier without having to put in extra effort is to reduce the weight. So, I always think about these things in this sort of a scientific way where um, I was thinking about, you know, there's, there's always a drag coefficient, right? The, the drag and the weight that, that causes us to slow down. And um, 
that's what we want to discuss today about and i thought about three things but it all started with this one story of uh, you know me having an offense with a friend um uh, this this kind of touched a, a a very specific spot in 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 my life where you know i've lived here long enough uh, in switzerland but you know time and again i come come to these these small little spots in my mind where i feel like i'm rejected because people underestimate me or because i'm not from here and it makes me go into these places where i i feel like i have to overcompensate to fit in and those sort of things right i think that's that's the story for a lot of us who come in into a new place or to a new country and start to you know carry out normal and, life uh, you know that was that was probably something that that this this friend of mine spoke about you know it really touched that part of my uh, my mind and it triggered something else so i really kept this offense for a long time Uh, I mean long time in the sense like a couple of months mm-hmm. but uh, you know the the thing that was going on in my mind was oh you know what this is not priority so let me s- keep deal with this another time when i have the time and the mind for it let me deal with it right so i kept that aside and i was moving on and realized it was already getting to build a lot of weight and burden in my in my heart and it was affecting me in ways that i really did not measure up right so uh, i understood the fact that there's this weight of offense mm. that i had to deal with going into this new year i think that's that's fascinating right so the offense started becoming a weight yeah could you dive deeper into that like was it because of how you felt or was it because you didn't address it immediately like what what was your feeling and and how did you feel it okay. becoming a weight how did you feel it becoming a coefficient drag yeah it was dragging me down literally to the point where um, you know i was thinking about it i was losing sleep and i was anxious i was also thinking about the fact that you know it this one instance leading to all the different examples and experiences that i've had in the past and i was thinking about why why do i have to go through such a a, a draggy feeling in my mind about the fact that it's uh, it's something as simple as a friend saying these things and uh, how deeply it affects me to to carry that offense to the point that it becomes a burden and you know the thing about offenses is the fact that we always carry this this burden of bitterness right mm. and the burden of bitterness is not something that that's easy on you it weighs you down and most of the time we carry grudges on other people but the grudges are not affecting them in any way you know it's like somebody said you know mix a cocktail of poison and then you drink it yourself right yeah. so that's what the bitterness does to you isn't it, it so it was it basically permeates all over your life yeah. right like you, you're does. affected by that by that offense to the point of bitterness and then you're you're sort of affecting your family as well you're maybe affecting your friends or maybe you're isolating yourself yeah. so it sort of permeates through through your life the years coming you're offended mm. it's creating bitterness and then you're kind of trying to look ahead for the year and then you're also having this weight of worry uh, yeah. as part of the coefficient drag yeah i think somehow it was all connected i think this opened some doors uh which started to make me wonder about the fact that oh you know what yeah i'm not enough so whatever i am trying to accomplish is definitely not not up to my standard right and then it also gave me this uh, you know this deep seated idea of of not being able to achieve the the dreams that i had set out to achieve and it started to take me down the spiral of thinking oh you know what i don't have enough you know i don't have enough resources to achieve the dreams that that probably uh, that i had set out to achieve last year mm. and um, you know it's always the idea that when you don't have enough then you worry about having enough mm. and you worry about what could you do to make things right so it's that's one thing to have an idea of of a god-given vision coming into a new country and 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 trying uh, 
things with your own resources and you know your uh, ability to put things together so all that was weighing me down and i think this offense that i was carrying this weight opened up you know a can uh, of worms it basically. opened up a can of worms yeah. and then it got me to worry um and then you know the thing about worry is that you start to control you don't want the narrative to be managed by somebody else you want to manage your own narrative and so then control steps in and then you start to try and manipulate and and push things through the way that you imagine it with with your own power yeah with instead, your own power instead of relying on on god and the holy spirit to guide absolutely you. Mm. and then there's no god in this equation because the moment you start controlling you already you know started to take control from god is mm. and it reminds me of the story of jacob mm. and how he all his life he's being told that he's second fiddle right like even the name is the one who who grabs at the heel yeah and i and i remember thinking of this story in another context and what's very fascinating is that he he took his older bro- brother's blessing yeah and and through that created a ripple in the family he 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 destroyed the family and he ran all those years and what's interesting is he wrestled with god right like if you don't know this story you should uh, check it out in the bible but he wrestles with god all night and at some point he goes to god and says bless me yeah and and he says i'm not letting you go until you bless me and the interesting thing is god doesn't say i bless you with health i bless you with things jacob was already rich by that time he had he had a crude amount of wealth he blessed him by changing his name he mm. blessed him by changing his identity and that's that's what's so fascinating right because god is basically saying you know josh you're offended and and that offense runs deep because of previous offenses um you're worried you're not relying on me um you have this weight of control right that you're now you you sort of your life is out of balance and you're trying to gain control no give it up let me change your identity come back to me yeah. and let me let me change that identity you you've kind of lost your way and and here's the way and your identity is that you're my son you're loved um your it cherished. starts to change your your idea of your own identity mm. so they were i mean in 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 all its ways right identity and and rejection they i i think they go together so well right and you know what we're discussing today these three things the weight of the offense the weight of worry and the weight of control all these three things that we want to offload you know it starts with this fundamental idea of somewhere it's it's rooted in the identity of uh, who you are and, and the acceptance of it mm-hmm. right so many times we seek that acceptance horizontally and uh, that's where i think we run into problems i think um, in in a world such as today the enemy is just waiting for this sort of an opportunity just an opportunity you know we're now in february the year has started these were your core fish and drags weight of offense weight of worry weight of control maybe in practical examples you can maybe in quick fire steps give us like things that you did to to break or to really let go of that weight and then I'll summarize with uh, with the bible verse sure first things first i made sure i i dealt with the offense you know i put it out for 3 weeks i mean 3 months and then i realized that the 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 longer it took the more difficult it got to go back and you know bridge this with a brother right mm-hmm. so first thing was to sort that out i think that it in in itself was closing a lot of unnecessary doors for me the second thing was to uh, you know of course strengthen my relationship with god and and also get into a place where i could really learn to trust i was really focused on this one particular verse i don't remember the reference but i you know the verse which said you know take a good look at what what has happened in the past mm. and it got me thinking about all the different scenarios you know the provisions the the protection the providence the the element of uh, of uh, you know god's reliability and faithfulness it got me you know kick started on this idea of trying to rebuild this trust one of the things that i really wanted to build as uh, as a family as the leader of our family 
is to get back into this idea of you know worship and and getting your heart set right uh, because a lot changes over worship you know mm-hmm. i think that's that's fundamentally the three things that uh, that i have done in this year uh, to get back into the thing so but you see it's already february right and so i would have loved to do this in in december you see most of the time you go into the new year you think it's a clean slate but you also have a dirty slate to to get rid of you know at the end of the year right so that i think that's also the place that most of us need to focus on changing you, you spoke about the idea that oh i want to do less sugar i want to do less carbs but uh, the idea of why we do things is sometimes more important than what we end up doing isn't it so the mindset is is my uh, you know go to for a, solving any issue right in my professional world we always deal with the mindsets and behaviors as much as we deal with the symptoms of the problems yeah. in itself yeah. so i think that's that's a good place to start yeah um maybe just to summarize and wrap up mm-hmm. i think what's interesting is that worry is also a symptom of trying to control things yeah and and so these things are inter- intertwined yeah you get offended and usually offense comes because something mm. you love is in danger and in this in this situation maybe something you loved was not the confidence that Jesus loves you and cares for you but maybe the pride or self esteem was was in danger mm. you get offended and then comes worry yeah and worry comes because you're out of balance and you're trying to control things uh hebrews 12:1 Therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness mm-hmm. let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles mm-hmm. and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us amen man like so so we don't know who the author of hebrews was but uh, i think this is a brilliant way to summarize how to deal with that coefficient i mean in fact while well, the amplified i think speaks about the fact that uh, lay aside every weight mm-hmm. um so if if you choose to not um um you know if you choose not to control and trust and if you choose to let go and not control i think um that helps us to let go of a lot of weight um in ways that we would not imagine Time to grow.